Again, welcome to those of you who have just joined in the last uh, last uh, moment here before that we kick things off. Uh, as always, we'll start with a couple housekeeping items and then dive uh, into things without any any uh, further hesitation. So, first thing we want to start the night off with is obviously uh, for those of you who may not have heard, um, we were recently acquired by Onyx Maps. Um, so. It's uh, obviously an exciting time here at Trout Routes. Uh, we, we are very much looking forward to all of the expertise and knowledge that Onyx provides and, and is going to bring to our team. And uh, um, we're excited to be a part of the Onyx team for any of my uh, new fellow co-workers who might be joining us out there tonight. Uh, really excited to, to be a part of that team and uh, really excited for the future of Trout Routes. You know, uh, not a whole lot is going to change except for things just getting better. So we're going to be the same trout routes. Uh, it's going to be the same people. You know, we're, we're all continuing on. We're excited about it, and we're excited to uh, have you alongside us and appreciate your support over the years uh, and then helping you, uh, helping us get to this, uh, to this milestone. The next update I want to uh, jump into is, again, tonight is going to be uh, led just by myself, as it was on our last class. So um, we've got both that chat and that Q&A section. You guys could do me a favor and try to make sure all of those questions that you might have throughout the class or at the end of the class end up in that Q&A session. And then you can use that chat to either kind of chime in on where you're joining us from or just talk back and forth with uh, other users, things like that. That'll just help make sure that... Uh, I can manage those questions a little bit better and uh, make sure I'm getting to all of them and not missing anything. All right, and then um, the last thing is, is we uh, did just have a new iOS update come out. We'll jump into it a little bit here, but uh, we did just have that drop on iOS. And I did wanna let everybody know before that I start getting questions, that update is going to be hitting web um, within the next couple months. So that's gonna be bringing those new base maps uh, as well as the new stream card that we released to iOS recently. And then uh, Android is gonna be following there closely after hopefully. So, all right, without any further ado, let me share my screen here. And we will dive into things. So, masterclass, everything you need to know about map layers. That's what we're diving into tonight. So like I mentioned, we've got that new iOS update 5.0.10 that just dropped last week. What that brought to the app, I brought new and improved maps. So the maps have been updated to add even more public lands, have better defaults for filters, and de-emphasize things that are not important to anglers, i.e. points of interest. So uh, with the, the old maps, uh, so to speak, we, uh, were, we had a lot of great uh, points of interest, but they tended to kind of get a little bit cluttered. We had a lot of different colors on the map, things like that. Where now we've simplified those and we've got two colors on the points of interest. So if you zoom in pretty closely into any section on the map, you'll see it's a little bit easier to kind of uh, peel through some of those areas and it, it's not as noisy necessarily. Uh, with that, we've also, as you can see here on the right hand side with those new maps, you can even just see at this kind of zoomed out layer of Minneapolis and the area surrounding our uh, quote unquote old headquarters here. Um, you can see those sections of green public land that are much more uh, uh, vibrant and lit up and you can see there's more public land around the area as well. So we've been able to, to uh, scour some, some sections and pull in some parks that we might not have had before that are gonna be really great for not only uh, trout specific use cases, but any other use cases that you might be uh, having as well within the app. So that's gonna be super exciting and we're really excited about this new uh, update. And like I said, we're excited to bring it to web and Android here soon. So diving into things, like I said, Tonight is gonna to be all about base maps. So first thing that we are gonna be diving into within those map uh, layers is gonna be those base layers. So what are base layers? The base layers are gonna be the reference maps shown within the Trout Routes app. These are the layers that are built on top of the map box base map that we utilize, but underneath those map modes that we'll jump into in a little bit here. Trout Routes has three base layers that you can choose from. Uh, that's going to be our road, terrain, and satellite layer. So these layers are going to be available to all users. So you don't have to be a pro user to get access to these layers as you will. Some of those map modes we'll jump into later. 
But uh, so all of those layers are going to be available to any user, depending on uh, no matter what you are, are using it on. So uh, why multiple? Different views offer different advantages uh, based on the situation you're in, of course. By selecting the right base layer for your needs, you can get the best view for the moment while having the ability to quickly swap your view to make the most of those map modes or custom markers you've added. Sometimes certain colors might not show up great on certain uh, base layers, things like that. That might be a situation where you would want to switch to a different base layer. Let's dive into one of those questions here so that we can uh, not, not have too many of them pile up. Beth asked, do you have an app that runs on a MacBook Air laptop? Or should we simply use the web whenever we use trout routes on our laptops? Great question, Beth. So we do not have a native app for uh, desktop. So anytime that you wanna utilize it on your computer and utilize that bigger screen real estate, things like that ahead of time when you're planning out your trips, all you'll do is use that web-based app. So that's gonna be the, the one that you want to use. Sometimes people will download some weird version of Trout Routes to their computer and it's not going to run right, things like that. So you want to make sure that you're using that web-based app anytime that you want to utilize your computer to get on those, uh, those maps. Awesome. Next slide here. So let's look at those uh, base layers themselves. So like I mentioned, we've got that road layer. So diving in, the road base layer puts an emphasis on displaying all available road information in a way that can be quickly and easily read when attempting to navigate from spot to spot while you're out on the water during the day or to simply orient yourself, orientate yourself on the map. You know, sometimes there's obviously a lot of information, things like that. Those roads can sometimes help you orientate yourself in areas that you know or even areas that you don't know based on some main roads that you might have read about or things like that before that you jumped into the app. So when we uh, are talking about the terrain layer, the terrain base layer is a topographic map that is a two-dimensional representation of a three-dimensional landscape. So for anyone who's used topographic maps before, you might know that they can be particularly useful when visualizing elevation gains and contours of the land. And this can be really uh, useful in the fishing case, I, I guess to say, to uh, identify areas of uh, high drainage. So it, spring runoff and things like that are coming up. Hopefully uh, April showers are gonna bring May flowers across a lot of the Midwest. We need a lot of water. But when that does start coming, you can use those topographic maps to kind of uh, understand where some of that water might be draining so you can target some of those areas where that water is draining in. Some, sometimes uh, fish like to sit in those areas where they're, they're starting to get some uh, good water flow into the river. So that's a great use case for that terrain base layer. And then the last uh, base layer that we'll quickly talk about before that we dive into the app and just quickly show you how to kind of uh, navigate between those base layers is gonna be the satellite base layer. The satellite base layer is an aerial perspective of the land. So this base layer uh, can help identify major features, uh, whether they be natural or not. You know, if you're looking for a, a massive, uh, your buddy says, oh, it's, I swear that spot that I wanted to go to was near behind this big, huge factory near the gas station. You can kind of help utilize that satellite layer to maybe find that spot or he, your buddy said, ah, I, it was right by this big rock next to this smaller boulder with a bunch of uh, black rocks near, whatever it might be. You can utilize the satellite layer sometimes to find things like that as well. So that's another great use case. So before that I go too far, I want to quit sharing this screen and we'll jump into my phone. And like I said, we can jump around and show you those different layers. Um, all right, we'll jump over to, to the uh, basic map mode. As I said, all of these base layers are, are going to be available to uh, users, whether they are basic or pro. So Pretty simply to, so you open up the app, right? Pretty simple to change those base layers or those map modes as we'll uh, jump into. All you'll do is simply look down on the bottom left-hand side of your screen there along that bottom toolbar, you're gonna see map layers. With one click, that'll pull up that map layers 
tool section and you'll be able to quickly and easily choose that base layer, whether you want that roads base layer, the terrain base layer, which again is gonna be that topographic map. You can see that contour, things like that will help you kind of see some of those drainage points and a little bit more of those uh, hilly areas, things like that. And then that satellite base layer, which again will help you tell some of those natural or man-made features across the map, which is really great to help again, orientate yourself or just uh, find some new spots that you might not have even known about that look fishy just based on looking at them on a map, right? So again, we'll swipe down to get to those map layers or those, those base layers or those map modes. You simply click into that map layers tool on the bottom left side of the screen there. All right, moving right along. And again, as you have questions that might pop up throughout the class, don't hesitate to uh, throw those in there. And then if, uh, if you might, uh, might have any questions as we uh, wrap up, we'll again have a, a bigger portion for any of those questions that might either pertain to the class itself or if you've got any uh, questions that have been burning as you've been using the app uh, over the last couple of weeks, I would love to answer any of those as well. So, all right, next we're gonna dive into those map modes. So like I said, within map layers, we've got those base layers or those map modes. So next map modes is gonna be, uh, we'll dive in again. What is a map mode? A map mode is an overlay on the map that displays information over top the chosen base layer. So again, that base layer is going to be over top of the map box base map. And then those map modes that we uh, have created using our proprietary information is going to be overlaid over top of that base map and that base layer. A lot of different kind of technical jargon within there. So the uh, single map mode is selected at a time depending on what the user would like to see displayed. So we've created these different map modes to uh, have pretty specific use cases depending on what you're wanting to see or what you're doing within the app itself. The Trout Route has uh, three modes available to basic users. Uh, I should say one mode available to basic users with three additional map modes being available to pro users. So again, diving into why multiple map modes. As with base layers, different views offer different advantages based on the situation you're in. By selecting the right map mode, you can get the most, you can get the best view for the moment while having the ability to quickly swap your view to uh, have different sets of information disp displayed on the screen with ease. So again, those map modes that are available are gonna be basic. Of course, basic is gonna be available to those basic users. And then when you upgrade to a pro membership, you're gonna get, then get access to that guide mode, that access mode, as well as the regulations mode. And we'll dive into those three. Looks like we've got a question coming in. Steve Wolf, seems like city town names are showing up with less zoom than used to be required. This makes it much easier to orient yourself when scoping a new area. Steve, that was one of those things that we uh, we focused on for sure was kind of figuring out what information needed to be displayed at what zoom levels and kind of how that information overlapped each other. So I'm really glad to hear that you're already finding it easier to uh, start to look at some of those areas than it might have been before it did. Uh, we're really excited to hear that. Really appreciate your support and really appreciate the immediate feedback. All right, moving into those map modes. Basic mode won't take too much time here. I'm sure all of you have explored it a little bit. Hopefully you haven't spent too much time on it because I promise there is a ton of information hidden within that those pro features. If you haven't dove into pro yet, it is well worth it. But basic mode, we are gonna have, we've displayed every designated trout stream across the entire lower 48. This uh, mode is useful for the angler who is simply looking to confirm whether or not a waterway may hold trout in it based on the data we source. So, you know, if you're simply looking to go on a trip and drive over a bunch of water and maybe fishing isn't your focus on that trip, things like that. You just want to know for the next time, maybe, does that stream have trout in it? This could potentially be a tool, basic could be a tool for you to simply look at the map, or even if you're, even if you're 
quickly biking or whatever it might be, and you want to just have a real quick view, that might even be a, a useful tool as a pro member. You could always uh, throw that on to, to basic there. All right, we got another question here. I'll keep answering them as they come in. David, is there anything to know about the acquisition by Onyx in terms of functionality slash look or feel, or is it still too early in the process? It's a great question, David. Uh, you know, obviously we just dropped this new um, kind of overview or overvamp of the, uh, the base maps themselves. Um, and we feel as though we're starting to uh, attempt to bring the product in line with that kind of look and feel of the Onyx family of apps. And we, we definitely feel as though this latest update is one of those things. So definitely um, we, are, we are striving to look and feel like those Onyx apps that some users may be used to using or some users may not. Um, Onyx is definitely the creme de la creme, so to speak, when it comes to usability from a, uh, from a user side of things and uh, just the overall look and feel. So uh, we, we are definitely, um, looking to and excited to utilize the, all the expertise that their team brings to kind of polish up the app and uh, make it feel real good and make it uh, use, use real great, so. Awesome. Will, Will, if we have updated information on regulated areas, uh, delayed harvest or hatchery supported, what is the best way to get it to you? It's a great question, Will. So we haven't even dove into the regulations there. That's gonna be one we'll, uh, regulations mode, that's that's one we'll dive into here in a couple modes, um, but that's a great question. The easiest way to get that kind of information to us would be to reach out to our team directly and there's two ways to do that. I would say the quickest way would be to reach out to our support team, uh, which will be just support at troutroutes.com. Or you can always send a general request to our hello at troutroutes.com and we can forward you to our support team from there. But if you want to get right to that support team, just simply support at troutroutes.com. You can pass along that information. Again, we're not relying on that crowdsource data, but we uh, greatly appreciate users like you who are, are willing uh, to pass along that information and uh, make sure that the app is up to date and, uh, and as tight as it can be for all users. So, awesome. Moving along then, guide mode. Guide mode is gonna be the mode that most users uh, utilize. We, we've, based on the data that we can see, we know that most users use the roads layer the roads base layer and guide mode. Those are the two that anytime you open the app, it's going to be set to at first. And then from there, there's a lot to explore. So we'll dive into guide mode, but I wanna make sure that we definitely cover those two additional modes as well. So a little bit of the overview for guide mode though. In guide mode, we color every, or we color code every stream based on Trout Rouse's own proprietary classification system. So this system that we've created is based on several different criteria, including things such as the amount of viable trout habitat, natural reproduction rates, and the amount of public access to name a few. So a lot of people are familiar with uh, state-based um, classification systems and things like that. And we'll get to that in the regulations mode and where we house that type of information. But we've created our own proprietary classification system that takes into account, again, those multiple different criteria, but then puts uh, public access into that criteria. So most states don't necessarily take public access into account when classifying a stream because that that's our main goal here at Trout Routes is to help users find public access. We're help, we're classifying some of those streams based upon the amount of public access as well. So a, a stream could have phenomenal, phenomenal fishing, great reproduction rates, things like that, but could have absolutely zero access. There's times where we might have that listed one class lower than you would uh, expect to see on the state classification, things like that. So that's just one thing to remember. And again, you can often access those state-specific classifications We'll dive into those in the regulations mode here in uh, just a couple minutes. So in guide mode, we color all public land a basic green and outline areas with public access right on the waterway itself. So you can see within the uh, pub, within the map legend here, that public section, and you can see on the screenshot there a little bit itself, that public section is gonna have that gray border surrounding it. So it's gonna have essentially, the streamline is gonna be a little bit larger in gray behind that stream, uh, the colored streamline. And when we're looking at the streamlines themselves, Pretty simple, gold metal, 
blue ribbon, quote unquote, going to be shown in gold, yellow, whatever you want to call that. Class one is going to be shown in bright green. Class two is going to be bright blue with those class three being that kind of darker mid-range blue, however you want to call it. Again, those public lands are all going to be shown within those with the, within that one green color-coded system. Within those public lands, though, you can click around on the map and dive into uh, what type of public land that is. Trails, as you can see, are going to be designated in a, a kind of purplish color, magenta color as well. Um, so if you zoom in far enough, you'll start to see those populate near and around those trailheads and campgrounds oftentimes. All right, next mode we're going to dive into here is going to be our access mode. So, oh, looks like I got a typo there in my, uh, my, my presentation. Got to love that, hey? In access mode, we focus on helping anglers target the really specific access opportunities, specifically fishing easements. These areas offer a unique uh, opportunity as they tend to see less traffic and pressure in comparison to state and national parks or WMAs and SMAs. Uh, so if you haven't uh, focused on any of these fishing easements or things like that that might be specific to your state, I would recommend it. It's uh, oftentimes, again, a great, great way to break away from some of those crowds or find some less pressured waters. In access mode, we are going to color uh, all the public land based on what type of public land it is. So as you can see on the map legend there, we're going to have easement land um, is going to be within purple. State and national park land is going to be orange. And then other public lands are going to be within a kind of lighter green. And national forests will be a slightly darker green on that access mode. So it's going to be a really easy way to kind of quickly tell what the different types of public lands mean. Joshua, great question. Easement land. So depending on the state uh, that we're looking at, easement land can be uh, a, could be different things. So here in the Midwest, where trout routes is kind of uh, located, where most of us are located, I should say, um, easement land could be where a farmer may have uh, given their land to the state, given some land to the state for the um, sole rights for anglers to access it. So it could uh, be, or we could have some uh, opportunities in Utah and things like that where it's just walk-in access where again private landowners are giving their uh, yep there we go great I'm glad to hear you know Pennsylvania I know has tons of easement land so yep it's going to be where farmers or private landowners in general are going to be giving their land back to the state or us anglers for that uh, sole use of angling. Right on, moving right along past the easement question there, we are going to be diving back into that map legend. So again, as we're looking at the past, the type of land itself and onto the uh, waterways themselves, we're not going to necessarily be showing you what uh, classification that waterway is. We're really going to be focusing on showing you those sections of water that are flowing through those easement sections. So as you can see on the, the Madison here in Montana, we've got a section of uh, public fishing easement access. So that's going to be shown on the streamline itself in purple, and then it will still have that uh, public section kind of listed uh, with that gray border surrounding it. So again, a really great act, uh, way to kind of find those, those uh, access, those county, um, state easement accesses, things like that. Oh, looks like, uh, yep, Tom, in Wisconsin, we have a, a lot of county easements. Do you show those? You know, Tom, we are... Uh, we're very proud, uh, to be honest with you, about some of how, how detailed we get on some of those easements. So we, we definitely get down into the weeds and find a lot of those county easements that sometimes are hard for anglers to find or uh, just sometimes are, are impossible for anglers to find even. So we've, we've had some people who uh, have been able to find certain easement sections that they didn't even know existed on a river that they'd been fishing for 20 years. And they didn't even know that there was a whole quarter mile of the river that they had could have had access to and had simply not been fishing for years. So great question. Next one from Christopher here. I use the access mode all the time. Love it, but one suggestion would be to color the rivers of private versus public section with different colors, in addition to the gray outlines of the public section. It's great, absolutely, yeah. Uh, just had a great day using Pro to check out new fishing sites in the Wisconsin Driftless area. Love it. I was just in the Driftless region this past uh, weekend for Easter with my family. It's uh, definitely an awesome place to put the app to use. 
Uh, that's a great suggestion, though, Christopher, and I'm sure our uh, our lead developer here is uh, watching along, Gage. So uh, make sure you write that one down, Gage. Christopher wants us to uh, make it a little easier to find those public versus private sections in that access mode. All right, moving on from access mode here, we'll dive into this last uh, mo map mode, and then we'll take any questions. So. Uh, Pretty shorter class within that half hour range, but I'm definitely looking forward to diving into any questions you've got. So let's take a look at that regulations mode here. This is definitely one that tends to go hidden, tends to be a little bit um, maybe intimidating for some anglers, um, but it's definitely one, again, that can be, can be used in a lot of really cool ways, depending on where you're at in the country. So in the regulations mode, we color every stream section based on the local regulation and or that local class, like I mentioned before, from that state. For example, if you're in Michigan, you might be familiar with those type one, type two, type three, type four uh, classifications, as well as gear restrictions, brook trout restoration areas, things like that. Whereas in Montana, we might be looking to understand the catch and release section or sections with floating restrictions, right? Um, we feel that this mode can be used extensively by East Coast anglers as well, um, where there are things such as delayed harvest sections that are crucial to know about. So as, um, let, me, let me find that real quickly again. As Will mentioned earlier, um, we do have those delayed harvest or hatchery supported sections that we have in there. Um, so this is a great way to find that information and uh, make sure that you're, you're following the rules. So in regulations mode, we color each section of stream based on what regulation may be present there on a state-by-state -state basis. So when you open that regulations mode and you dive into that map legend down on the bottom there, and you zoom around the country, you'll see that depending on what state you're in, you'll see different regulations pop up. So you can see in the map legend, we've got those North Carolina regulations shown. If you were hovering over New York, as we are in the screenshot there, those New York regulations would be shown as well as if you zoomed over into seeing New York and Pennsylvania, both of those would be listed there. And so you would be able to easily decipher those um, colors across all of the different states. Beth asks, is it, is it possible to make the map legend in regulations mode a bit smaller? The map legend completely covers the map when I open the legend. It's a uh, great question. So Beth, depending on the um, height that you have the legend at, sometimes it won't pop up all the way, but I definitely hear what you're saying. There is times where if you want to expand it to be able to see all of those multiple states, uh, sometimes it can get a little large. So I would say just try to swipe it down so you have just that, uh, I guess, maybe third of the screen view of the regulations, and you should be able to view them mostly on a state-by-state -state basis that way. Awesome. Anonymous attendee asked, how do I display the map legend on my iPhone app? That is a great question. Let me jump out of, as we uh, have wrapped up here on the, the um, slide section, let me jump into my phone and we can explore some of these map modes a little bit more. All right. So, We'll slide down here, we'll zoom out as we're in New York here. So to access that map legend, depending on what map mode you're in, again, we'll just quickly pull up those map layers is where you're gonna be able to choose those map modes really quickly and easily toggle between them. And then to see that map legend, again, right down on that bottom bar there, you'll see second one from the right map legend, that'll pull up that legend. And again, if we zoom out here, and have a couple different states shown, you'll be able to see we can scroll up and see those Pennsylvania, Virginia regulations, West Virginia regulations. And again, we're gonna have multiple different colors there, make it quite easy to be able to kind of decipher those maps. Awesome, I will keep my phone up here just in case we have any other questions jumping into this. Michael asks, uh, he's downloaded some maps when fishing off the grid. Do any of these base layers or map modes not work with full functionality? Um, that's a great question, Michael. So the one thing that when you're downloading maps offline that you, the only thing with functionality that you'll wanna make sure that you're doing is anytime that you go to download those maps, if you wanna have multiple different uh, base layers selected, you'll wanna make sure that you have that base layer selected when you go to download that map. 
Otherwise, you'll have access to all of this information when you download those maps offline, except for things that uh, populate in real time, like those USGS stream gauges or things like that. So everything that we've looked at tonight, though, you'll have access to all of that as long as you download those layers, as long as you download those base layers that you'll want. So if you want the roads base layer while you're in a section, as well as the satellite base layer, possibly, you'll want to make sure that you download the same section with both of those base layers selected. So if I wanted, let's say, this section offline with the roads base layer, I would download this section, as, and then I would go to the satellite base layer and download the same exact section and just name it satellite and roads base layer. So that's one uh, thing to make sure that you're, you're being mindful of when you are downloading those maps for offline use. Uh, all right, Joshua asked, why do you think guide mode is most used? I love the regulations layer. It's a great question, Joshua. You know, I think for a lot of users, uh, trail routes tends to have a lot of information and sometimes it can be a little bit overwhelming. So for a lot of users, like I said, that guide mode is gonna be the mode that populates first when you jump into the app. So for users who may not be diving too deep into the app yet or things like that, this is gonna be the mode that's just simply auto-selected. So. That uh, would be my assumption as to why we see most users utilizing that guide and that roads base layer. Awesome. Christopher, worth noting that the local regulations are also available as a tab in the access mode, allowing you to stay in access mode. That is a really great, uh, really great point there, Christopher. You know, with that new stream card, we've uh, gotten really uh, really detailed with those certain waterways and things like that. So that's a really great tool to, no matter what uh, mode you're in, be able to find some of those local regulations. Kevin, I'm looking at the access mode in Wisconsin and there's some land in a yellow color. What does that mean? I see a light and dark green, but no key for yellow. That is a great question. Let's zoom on over and take a look here and try to decipher what you might be seeing there, Kevin. So, the access mode. Ah, I'm assuming you are looking at some of this yellow land potentially. This is gonna be, again, if we jump into that legend, that's gonna be that state or national park land, kind of in that orange or yellow. Um, if you are seeing another yellow, I would love to see maybe diving into here. So this is gonna just be local public land. If that's kind of the uh, coloration, it might be, overlaying over uh, a green on the base map, which might be causing a, simply a kind of a coloration with those two different colors mixing. That would be my guess uh, off of just looking at it there. Awesome. Scott says he's looking at a certain area in Colorado in guide mode with satellite base layer. You can see the terrain of certain areas clearly, but there is a large section that has have green layers over them and you can't see the train very well. Is there a reason the entire screen isn't clearly showing the terrain? It's a good question. So Scott, we might be looking, you might be uh, referencing those green uh, overlays for those public lands. And if we zoom over to Colorado here, here we go. There is definitely a lot of green kind of overlaying that. And if we switch into satellite, sometimes it's hard to see past that. One way to get rid of those is to simply jump into that filters down on the bottom right hand side of the screen, click into those filters, and we can scroll up into those layers for pro users and toggle off those public that public land shading. So then if we zoom out, that should make it much easier to zoom in and see all of those land areas. So you're not having to look through that kind of green haze of those public land overlays. So again, filters down on the right-hand side there, we can toggle those on or off. I'll toggle them back up there. All right. Oh, I'm in Colorado. When I bring up legend and try to shorten it, just disappears to the bottom. That is a great question though. Let's see here. Jump over into that regulations mode. Jump into that legend. Ooh, that might be a, uh, a 
system issue. Uh, I would love to, to try to take that offline with you. If you want to send us an email, uh, either to uh, to our hello at Trout Routes email, that'll be the one that goes to me, um, and we can kind of try to solve that there. Um, that might be the the same uh, issue that um, let me see here real quick that Beth was uh, mentioning earlier. So Beth, that's the same issue that you're experiencing where when you open that legend, um, you don't have the option to have that uh, at multiple different heights. Would love to dive into that with you. Tracy, is there a way to export my custom saved locations other than sharing each one individually? Tracy, unfortunately at this time, we don't have uh, any way to export your information from Trout Routes. We have the ability to import from on X as well as uh, as your Google Maps uh, points. But at this point, we don't have the ability to export from Trout Routes. Um, so there is, uh, at this time, the, the only way to do that is gonna be to send uh, point by point. All right, anonymous attendee asked, how often is Trout Routes updated? Do people need to update their offline maps periodically? Great questions. Uh, Trout Routes have updated, uh, as, as periodically as we we can get to it is a great way to say, you know, again, we're a small time team of five that has now uh, been brought into a team of over 400 people. So uh, in the past, we've tried to go through uh, quarterly and do deep dives into certain sections of the country. Now having a, a uh, being part of a larger team and growing our team here in the in the short term, hopefully, we'll uh, hopefully be able to dive deeper into those sections. But I would say, uh, Every one to two years, you could expect your section uh, to, to have a pretty good uh, look at it and a good deep dive into it. But I will say our mapping team is constantly uh, watching and taking a look at uh, anything that happens within land ownership changes or things like that to try to stay on top of some of those bigger things that might happen. Uh, and then do people need to update their offline maps periodically? Um, a, a user wouldn't uh, have necessarily any need to update those offline maps. Um, I will say sometimes if I get done with a, a trip, I'll delete those offline maps um, just to save certain space. The offline maps aren't gonna take up enough space on your phone where you're gonna see any performance issues or anything like that. I just uh, tend to like to get rid of those to save a little bit of clutter uh, until that we uh, are able to dive in and hopefully revamp that kind of my content section. Sometimes it's a little bit easier to not have a ton of those offline maps listed in there. All right, Mark asks, uh, here's different, a difficult time discerning public areas. What modes are the best to make use, uh, to use to make the public areas more prominent? It's a great question, Mark. Um, it kind of depends potentially on how uh, you'd like to view maps. For my personal use case, I like that road and guide layer because that I can see pretty pretty easily that contrast off of the map between those public lands with that green shading versus those uh, private land sections that don't have any of that green shading. And then looking on the waterway itself, I tend to find this uh, contrasting of the, the lighter background with that gray bar on that public public section of water. I tend to find this to be this contrast level to a uh, be pretty easy to decipher. So I would recommend trying to take a look at that guide mode and that uh, roads base layer. Otherwise, another great, again, another great tool is gonna be that access layer. You can see this is actually an easement section that we were taking a look at here that we wouldn't have even necessarily known was a specifically an easement section had we not uh, switched over to that access uh, map mode using those map layers, again, down on the bottom left-hand side of the screen. All right, we'll switch back to that guide mode and keep moving on. Love to see all these questions pouring in. We will uh, hang out and answer them until you guys stop. All right, Joshua, when I open up an offline map, the blue highlight is overlaid. How do I get rid of that? Let's see here. When you click into those offline maps, that's gonna simply show you uh, where that that section of offline maps is downloaded. Um, if you don't want to have that, you'll just simply be able to click right off of that. When you get off of when you get offline, you aren't going to see that blue overlay. That will simply be the only section that will populate when you get out to the water there. Um, so that's a pretty easy way to kind of uh, decipher um, 
that those maps and kind of make sure that you're not viewing through the lens again of uh, some of those overlays are, are hard to see through, right? So if we jump into that My Content and we click onto those offline maps, we can see there. If we want to uh, make sure we're not trying to view through the haze of the blue, we simply click off of that downloaded area and that'll pull us back into that. And again, you won't see that blue haze when you get offline and don't have access. You'll simply see all that information just within that area. Great question though. All right, Michael. Uh, Michael asks, I see the legend that has the distance noted uh, as I scale the map in the lower left-hand corner, corner. Is there a functionality be to measure a specific river hike distance between two points that you define? It's a great question. So Michael, there's a couple of different ways to uh, find distances on the map. So if you're looking uh, for point to point distance, so uh, say maybe a parking spot to the river. So say we wanna find from this visitor center, we wanna find how far it is to the river. The first uh, way to do that is going to be to go to create down on the bottom. Uh, again, in that bottom toolbar right in the middle there, go to create and go to new line. We can then say you parked right here or you were planning to park right here. Maybe we can add our first point there. And then we can simply follow along what looks to be like it would be the path to get to the water. Say we got a little angsty and wanted to cut, right? So we can see down along the bottom there of the screen that that total distance in feet that of that line that we've drawn, create there, was that 700 or was that 900 feet? So that's going to be the quickest and easiest way to kind of tell how long a distance on a point-to-point -point line might be. If we're looking to see how uh, long a distance on a waterway might be, we can use our river miles tool. So the river miles tool is gonna to be accessed using that toolbar on the right hand side of the screen. Uh, you can see we've got our compass, we've got our, uh, kind of our, our point uh, button that will take us to where we are exactly on the map, excuse me. And then the next one down is gonna be that ruler and that's gonna be that river miles tool. If we click on that river miles tool, we can click on the waterway itself to start to set ourselves uh, a starting point, and then we can click on another section, our ending point, and that will show us there that that section of, that section of river is 0.45 miles. So whether you're looking to kind of tell how long a float trip or a walk and weight trip might be, that's gonna be a really great tool to do that. So those are gonna be the two different ways to kind of tell how long a section or a, a distance on the map might be. Awesome. Kevin uh, asked, could the yellow be Indian Reservation land? That's a great point. Um, so if, Kevin, if we zoom out here, you will see that we do have those Indian Reservation lands displayed as that yellow. So if that would, uh, that could have potentially been that, uh, that yellow that we were talking about there, that would be anytime that we're in that guide mode, that'll be those Indian Reservation boundaries are going to be shown in the yellow public land or the yellow land uh, overlays. Awesome, Beth, glad to hear that you were experiencing that same issue. Would definitely love to dive into that with you uh, offline if, if we uh, can try to get that solved for you. Uh, all right, Ron Schuster said he loses the stream street view icon occasionally. How do you bring them back up outside of closing and restarting the app? It's a great question, Ron. Um, for, uh, for those of you who might not necessarily know what he's talking about, if we click into a waterway itself, we can see we have those bridge icons pop up, whether it be a brown general bridge or those orange street view bridges. So within that, we can one click street view, be able to kind of see what the access might be, what parking around that bridge might be, things like that. Um, so Ron, to, to get to that, um, it might be simply a case of anytime that you click off of the waterway, we're not gonna have those populated, otherwise it would be really busy. Um, but when you do click into those waterways, we'll have those bridges populate and that'll be where you'll be able to find those street view bridges. Uh, hopefully that 
answers the and solves the question and uh, hopefully it was just simply an issue of uh, needing to click onto the stream to be able to access those street view icons. Tom, I just got my trout routes and I'm still learning. This Zoom is really helpful. Was there a way to print a hard copy of the area of interest? It's a really great question, Tom. Um, you know, if I were looking to make sure I have a paper copy with me while I'm out on the water, we definitely have users do that. There's a couple different ways to do it. If you wanted to make sure you have the same view that you might be used to while you're looking on your phone screen, you could pretty simply take a screenshot of your phone screen and take uh, an email that to yourself or transfer it to your computer, however you might want to get it to your computer, and then print those screenshots. Another way would be to, if you're using the web app and have that bigger screen real estate and have a little bit more that you could potentially print out, you can take a screenshot of your computer screen that way and print that out. I definitely, I know that's one way that we've had users do it. Uh, in the past, they'll take a screenshot of their screen and then print that out in, the, uh, in that landscape format, and that can potentially work really well if you uh, want to make sure that you have those paper copies of the maps for yourself. Uh, Steve asks, what limits offline map storage? Phone memory, OS, other. Uh, so this is uh, actually going to be, uh, I believe, within the operating system. I would have to um, confirm with our, our software engineer. Um, so I don't want to say definitively. Um, so I will try to uh, I will try to figure that out as soon as I can, Steve, and confirm with you and figure out how, uh, how we could potentially help you uh, getting some more space there if that's possible. Again, uh, it might just be a case of needing to potentially manage some of those offline maps that you're not utilizing anymore or things like that. All right, Joshua said, I'm really struggling with offline maps. He just turned off his Wi-Fi and cellular data, and when he opened the app, it tells him that he needed to the internet to access. That is a really great question there, Joshua. Let's, um, let's take that one offline. That one sounds like something that maybe you and I can uh, either do a, a one-on-one -on -one call or even just through email um, and try to help make sure that you uh, are, are fully understanding those offline map modes and things like that. Um, but it looks like might, we might potentially need to dive in a little bit deeper and make sure that things are set up properly. Awesome. Richard asks, can you review the miscellaneous filters? He never saw these and has never used them. Absolutely. Let's dive in. So again, to access those filters, it's going to be down on that bottom right-hand side. You can see within here, we've got, depending on what map mode you've got, you'll have different filters shown. And this is going to essentially show you all of those different opportunities. And as we sh scroll down here, we've got those miscellaneous. So county and state overlay, that will, um, we toggle that on and off. You can see we're going to have those lines populate on and off with those county or state lines. So that will kind of help. You tell, uh, depending on if there's certain county restrictions that you know or things like that, where that might be helpful. That's a really great way to tell that. Allowing map tilt. This is going to um, allow you to pan the map um, and rotate the map. So depending on how you might want to view it, this, again, can just having those on or off can help or not help you orientate yourself within the map. Persistent settings, checking this on or off is simply going to make sure that every time that you open the app, any of these things that you do, so if you have, you don't want all of the parking spots around the map or things like that, or you don't want all of the, uh, or the, don't want all of the boat ramps, whatever it might be, you can really uh, easily select those persistent settings so that when you close the app and reopen the app, all of those parking spots aren't going to be shown again. You'll have those settings that you set last time with not wanting to see those parking spots, not wanting to see those boat ramps still populated and still at the settings that you want to use. So lock filters enabled. Turning this on will uh, prevent filters from resetting to defaults when you switch the map modes. So this one is going to be, uh, again, it's going to make sure that those filters stay consistent when you jump into different map modes. Snap to stream. Again, as you can always click that little I to learn a little bit more information, right? Stream snapping mode. When you tap a stream, Trout Route snaps 
the map to that stream by default. Turn the setting off to default to disable stream snapping. So again, sometimes that kind of popping in and popping out of the map, some people don't like. This is one way to toggle on or toggle that off. And then zoom fade enable. The settings, uh, this setting fades out stream access points when you zoom out, making the overall map more intelligible. Um, however, if you want to see all access points at all zoom level, see all boat ramps across the given state, you can turn the setting off. So that's just going to um, make it a little bit easier to see those. Again, I mentioned earlier, this update was really about making making sure it's easy to digest the information within the app. And this is a really great way to do so across the entire map. Um, and, and then if you want all the information all the time, you can uh, toggle that off and that'll show you all the information all the time, no matter what Zoom setting you're at. Um, that can definitely get a little overwhelming though, I will say that much. And then Google Maps default. This is gonna be when you click on a point, say I wanted to get directions to that campground, so this is going to take me, because that I use an iOS device, this is going to take me to my Apple Maps. If I wanted to have that take me to my Google Maps, I would select this, and that would make Google Maps my default. So when I clicked to get directions to a place, that would be able to uh, take me right to my to Google Maps instead of to Apple Maps. So that's just going to be able to uh, be where you'll select where you want those uh, directions to populate. So great question, Richard, and I'm really glad we were able to dive a little bit deeper into those. All right, Christopher, in guide mode, it appears that the gray shaded public section includes both truly public and private easement when you compare to access mode in which you can differentiate truly public versus private easement. Is this correct? Um, yes, that is correct, Christopher. So we are showing you truly public as well as those easement sections. So we're going to be showing you sections of water that you can access, that the public can access. That's a great way to uh, kind of uh, designate the differences there and, and a great, great, uh, great question. Uh, Lou, that's, uh, let's see here. Those do not show up. You know, Lou, I'm not uh, necessarily sure that I'm sure what you're referring to. It might've been uh, something you were commenting on in that time specifically, but would love to try to get that question answered for you. Anonymous attendee asks, when will the River Miles feature be available for Android users? Uh, we're hoping to bring that. So again, I mentioned that the uh, stream card and the uh, base layers is going to be coming to um, to our web here soon in the next couple months. And then we're going to have a big Android release coming uh, after that. We're hoping that within that Android release that follows our next big web release, that that will be. Uh, will include those River Miles tool within that, as well as StreamCard 2.0 and the new uh, base maps. Great question. Mark, appreciate the support, always do. Kevin, I missed how I can get the River Mile tool to display on your phone. Let's jump into it. So Kevin, again, if you are on an Android device, that might be why you're not seeing it. If you're on, on an iOS device though, it's gonna be on that. Uh, toolbar along the right hand side you can see right below the uh, button that would take us to where we are right above that in-app tutorials button is going to be that ruler looking button and that will take us to the river miles tool which we will then be able to tap along the river and see how far this section is awesome joshua said uh, he's about to hit no cell zone for opening Trout Weekend and is in need of those offline maps. Awesome, Joshua. I am going ahead and copying that email address right now, and I will reach out to you tomorrow, and we will get that solved. Awesome, Dave. Can you add filters for local information classes, presumably set by the state, in addition to the filters that you have for Trout Route defined classes? Um, that's a great question, Dave. Um, so again, we have those the ability to kind of see those if we look at Michigan specifically. We'll dive into that regulations layer. And if we jump into the regulation, you'll be able to see those uh, those Michigan regulations. And with one quick, easy tap, we'll be able to get those guide 
regulations back. So kind of quick tap back and forth. But unfortunately, there's no way to uh, be able to see both of them at the same time. So hopefully that answers uh, the question there. Richard, we appreciate the uh, support. Thank you so much. And uh, we're, we're excited to bring these master classes to everyone, like I mentioned. Uh, Beth asks, when the app is updated, do we lose our persistent settings? Beth, great question. Unfortunately, you do. So one thing, when we do update the app, you'll need to jump back in, quickly adjust those settings, and make sure to check on persistent settings. Um, Hopefully we'll be able to get that solved in the future, but I do believe that at this point, anytime that you do those updates, that is gonna clear those persistent settings and you'll just have to jump back in and redo them. Ron asked, how do you delete an offline map? Great question. So again, for those, uh, for those out there tonight, to access those offline maps along the bottom toolbar there, you'll click into my content. And from my content, you can see those Offline maps, your favorite streams, markers, or lines. You can see those selectors across the top. And within offline maps, we can simply go to delete and confirm that we want to delete this offline map. That was uh, one I utilized this past weekend and don't need any longer. So there we go. Clear the space and uh, have tons of tons of space left to add way more for, for the new spring uh, season coming up. So, oh. Ron, you figured it out. Well, I'm glad glad you figured it out, but I'm glad that we were able to get that uh, answered and on the master class for everyone here tonight as well. Lou, uh, what number do I call to talk to me? I was thinking about the icons below the compass. Uh, ah, so Lou, you might be, uh, again, you might be on an Android device if you don't see those icons below the compass. That would be the, uh, the main reason that you wouldn't see those icons. Otherwise, you could be simply using a uh, out-of-date version of the iOS app. In that case, make sure you jump into the App Store and update it via that. Um, I can definitely uh, jump offline with you. Uh, if you want to reach out to the hello at troutroutes.com, I would be happy to provide my uh, number and we can definitely jump on the phone and uh, talk that way. Awesome, Christopher. Thanks, we appreciate it. Got to shovel the snow. I know. I was, you know, uh, I was taking a look at this morning. I woke up here in Minnesota and we were getting snow. And I was, I was watching the news and I was very thankful that I wasn't in Wisconsin any longer, like I was this past weekend. Because, uh, yeah, that does not look like it was going to be any kind of fun. That's for sure. Awesome, Ted. With the merger with Onyx, will you be able to? Uh, will you be accessible through Onyx app as well? Uh, so Ted, that's a great question. And at this time, uh, we are going to be a standalone app where we're going to stay our own brand, things like that. Um, I will say for those of you who don't know, Onyx um, did just launch their fish app last week. So uh, Onyx Fish has been launched within Minnesota. Um, that is going to be for lake anglers. It's going to be for uh, specifically for uh, traditional gear anglers is going to be kind of the main focus for that app. But it, that is going to be a really great app. Um, from the Onyx family. Um, so Onyx Fish, definitely go ahead and uh, check that one out. If you're in Minnesota, or going to be traveling to Minnesota this summer and looking to fish some of the uh, amazing lakes that we've got around the state here. Awesome, Cynthia, I attended the Great Water. I attended Great Waters a few weeks ago volunteering for Brule River Sportsman's Club. I was so excited to share how to use the map in conjunction with trout routes. I've not used the ruler icon before, so please know about it. I'm really glad that you were able to uh, jump on, Cynthia, and that we were able to run through that one tonight. That is definitely uh, a newer feature that we've introduced in the last few months. Uh, you know, we're always introducing new exciting things, so some of those can kind of sometimes get uh, skirted under the rug. So definitely glad we were able to pull that one out and make sure that you knew about it and can uh, get some great use out of it this spring. Appreciate you joining. Well, everyone, it looks like we got through all 46 questions you guys brought tonight. It was a really awesome night for questions. Really appreciate all the uh, engagement and the interaction and appreciate you all attending. And uh, definitely looking forward to the next one and uh, excited to see where things uh, go from here. Thanks for joining, everyone.